Hello again. Uh, I want to talk now about uh, a confusion students have that I have observed over time between strength versus stiffness. They confuse the two terms. And because they confuse the two terms, they make parts that are far more massive and far heavier than they need to be. They think they need to make a part stronger when in fact they need to make a part stiffer. And when they're making it stronger, they tend to throw more material at it or a higher grade of material at it in order to get what they were after, which was rigidity in the first place. But that can be counterproductive and uh, very, very expensive. So I have a few little show and tales. Now, first of all, what is something that's rigid and what is something that is strong? What are examples? I find that it's easy to visualize if you take extreme cases. So what's something that's very, very strong, not rigid at all? Look in my little magic show and tell box. How about a rope? Very strong, no rigidity, except when it's under load in one direction only. How about a chain? Doesn't get any stronger than a chain, but couldn't build a car chassis out of it very well. Makes a limp noodle look positively stiff. What about rigidity? What's something that's very, very rigid, but very, very low in strength? What's the converse? How about potato chip? Very, very rigid. Look at that. A mash on it, the other end kicks up. Very, very rigid, but when I put any kind of real load on it, catastrophically fails. Very rigid. Very high in rigidity, very low in strength. We all know that due to the dome shape, this is strong because of one thing, because the glass itself, if I was to break this and take a piece of that glass, it would snap as easily as that potato chip. But because it is shaped in a geometric form, the loads can be distributed. And it's rigid and strong up to a point. So you can have rigidity and almost no strength. You can have strength and no rigidity. You need to pay attention to the application. So here I have two small blocks. I will put them one yard apart. And as luck would have it, I have some material. Here's a half inch diameter aluminum tube. It is one yard long, 36 inches. If I place the ends here, and let's say this is a tube in some sort of uh, machine, and in the middle we need to put a load of some type. Let's say a load of 10 pounds. Well, I'm pushing about 10 pounds, but this tube flexes. It has a lack of rigidity in the center. It's a half an inch wide. It's 72 inches long. Uh, it's 36 inches long. So it has an aspect ratio, aspect ratio length to width of 72 to 1. That's very, very high if you've got to put a load in the middle. It's going to flex. So let's say the young engineer designed a half inch tube to carry a certain load and found, oh my goodness, it's flexing. It's flexing. So the first indication is, well, I'm going to get rid of that weak aluminum. I'm going to get something stronger. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a solid, solid, mind you, piece of steel. The aspect ratio is the same. Guess what? It flexes too. Well, that's okay. I can still fix it with material. Even though this is tremendously heavier than the hollow aluminum tube, it didn't fix it. So making it heavier didn't fix it. 
So I'm going to go into material selection. Titanium. Where the steel tube there costs maybe $2 and the aluminum tube maybe costs $250. $20 for titanium. We know titanium super material, right? Same aspect ratio. Boing, 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 boing. Still no rigidity. It's virtually the same. Well, dead gum, it's got. It, it, I'm not giving up. I'm going for the best of the best. And I'm even going up in diameter slightly from half inch to five eighths, and I'm using carbon fiber. Carbon fibers, tensile strength, 250,000 pounds per square inch. Put it on there, this'll do it. Well, it's better, but that didn't fix it. It still gives in the middle. The reason being is that over this long length, the difference between the bottom and the top, when you bend it, the top is going in compression the bottom is going in tension. There's such a small span that there's not enough difference to give it rigidity. The main rule of thumb, if you boil it down to the most simple elements, is to align as many atoms as possible in the direction of the load. Now, to illustrate that, let's go back to our low-cost, universal, number one building material in the world, steel. Here I have a piece that's one-eighth inch thick, three-quarters of an inch wide. If we orientate it this way, floppy, nothing, will carry no load. Turn it on its edge, align the atoms of the material in the direction of the load. Now, it's much stiffer. I can, they're still bending, but it's better than the tubes, even the carbon fiber. When you've got an aspect ratio like this, you have to take this into consideration. The geometry, the shape, dominates stiffness, not material. You can throw money at it all day long. You can put a $50 carbon fiber tube in there. It doesn't do that much better. So how would you fix it? Well, this was a mighty start. This really helped in this direction, but again, we have no structural integrity on this axis. So the tubes, because they can carry load equally from all directions, now here we have a large diameter tube, inch and a half in diameter. If you take the small 3 8 inch diameter rod that's solid because of the ultra thin wall and you put these on a scale, there's, they're virtually identical. In fact, this may be a little heavier. But notice because this is one and a half inches in diameter, same length, one third aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is now down to 25 to 1. Now we have structural integrity. We reduce the aspect ratio with the geometry. So when you need rigidity, do it with the geometry, not with the quality of the materials or the quantity of the materials. Now, half inch tubes, real quick, I'm gonna show you the engineer's best friend. Well, triangles. This is more than a yard long. It's a yard and a third. It's made out of the same half inch wimpy material that we were illustrating before. The span is even greater. In fact, if you grab it in the center of these long spans, you can it'll actually squeeze and deflect here. But where we have created triangles, put the load here, which is the load intended to go. Here, support here, support here, load here. It's as stiff or stiffer than that inch and a half tube. Why? Because the load is going down in tension and compression all the way around. These members are loaded in tension and compression and not in simple bending. 
stiff, stiff, stiff. This will illustrate it. It actually touched this, and it's very, very light. Feather light. This is this wall tubing is half a millimeter wall. Super light. It's actually as light as one of these thicker wall tubes. So that's it. It's in the triangles. It's in the geometry. It's in the circles. That's how you get the rigidity.